Welcome to e Know How. In this video, we will look at uh, uh, how a CMOS level shift up circuit is constructed. But before we look at the circuit, we'll see where these level shift up circuits are used. So usually in an IC, uh, the outputs or the output pads which go out to the pads, those could be operating at say a voltage of 3.6 volts. So all the pads would be working at 3.6 volt for example. So I have something like this. Whereas the internal and then it goes to something called the analog front end which also operates at 3.6 volts but internally there could be digital circuits which operate at a lower regulated voltage. So you could have digital circuits that operate say 1.2 volts. So this is the digital circuitry and then this talks to the analog front end and anything to the outside world talks at a higher voltage of 3.6 volts and there could be some analog circuits that, that are operating on 3.6 volts. So analog and the analog front end which communicates with the outside world. So this is at 3.6 again. So these are just examples of voltages. So you could have two voltages. So one we call say we call this VCC and then we can call the digital supply the 1.2 volt supply VDD. So now to translate for signals to communicate between these two, say when a signal has to go from the digital domain to the analog front end, it has to level shift up from 1.2 to 3.6 volts. So in this video, we'll be looking at that circuit and how it is constructed. So let's look at a input signal which is coming in at 1.2 volts. So this is the input signal that comes from digital that's in. And so we invert it. So this is working at VDD level. So you have an inverter which is working at VDD levels. And then we need to translate it up to VCC level. So for this, what happens is, and also before I proceed further, I just want to use a different color for the transistors that I draw here because these transistors that I drew right now could be low voltage device, low voltage transistors that only operate on the VDD level, which is, so in this case, the example is 1.2 volts. And now we need to go higher up in voltage so these transistors may not be able to take the, the higher voltage of VCC. So we, I'm using a different color for these transistors to complete the circuit. And these are higher voltage devices, thick gate devices that can actually tolerate the higher voltages. So this supply is VCC which is the higher voltage supply. <laughs> so now I take this in, I take this in and connect it to this place. I take in bar and connect it here. So what I built is there is an V in which is coming in at say V in, this is V in and this is V I n bar which is the inverted signal and now I have to look at these two signals say A and B here. Let's look at these two signals. So when V in is high or at 1.2 volt this is V, v in is high 
and V in bar would be low or ground. So now you have this end channel device turned on and this end channel device turned off. And we have this weak P channel devices cross coupled. Both are weak. So whichever end channel device is on, it will pull down on this node. So the node B in this case is pulled down, which means the gate of this device is at ground and so node A will be pulled up and it will pull up all the way to VCC. And if you look at the other case now, we look at the other case where Vn is at low or ground, Vn is low, Vn bar is high, the signal is high, so you got 1.2 volts here, and you got 0 volts here on this side. Now node A is pulled down, and that means the gate of this P channel is ground, so node B is pulled up all the way to VCC. So now what we have here is, this is the output here. Node A is the output and it could be buffered by using an inverter, a VCC level inverter. Node A is at VCC level. It, it gives the same signal as Vn. Vn is at 1.2 volt level, whereas node A or Va is at the 3.6 volt or the VCC level. So this is how a level shift up is constructed. But there are a few more things that we would like to look at on this level shift up circuit. What we need to make sure here is, so let me draw this again the way we drew it before. So you had the inverter that brings in the signal at the VDD level. So, so this is V in and this is V in bar. And now we draw the other part of the circuit. So where you have the P-channel device, weak P-channel devices cross-coupled. The reason for this being weak is because the end channels are supposed to pull down the node. They should not fight. So now you have this connected here, the VN bar goes and connects here. This is VCC and so what we call this as node, instead of calling it node A, we will call this V out and this side is V out bar. So now you see Vn is high and Vn bar is low. VN bar is low, so this transistor is on here, this device is on, this device is off, so you will have this node is V out bar is pulled to low or ground and V out is pulled to high, V out is pulled to high to VCC. Now if you take the other case where your V in is low, V in bar is high, and these high and low are the 1.2 volt levels. And now you have this is low, so this transistor is off, and this is high, so this transistor is on, which means this output V out is pulled to low. And if this gate is pulled to low here, which will pull V out bar all the way high to 
VCC. So this is how it works. So but now one thing to take into consideration is if you look at these two end channel devices here they need to have the lower VT to turn on with a 1.2 volt applied here. So with 1.2 volts applied here they are supposed to be able to turn on hard and pull this node to ground or pull this node to ground depending on what the input is. If it's not possible for some reason for these high voltage devices so there is a way to use low voltage devices in there and use it and do it for this cross coupled latch. The way that works is so let me go back to the colors that I've been using before. So we have the high voltage, we still have the high voltage P channels. So I'm just drawing the alternative arrangement. So you have this is connected to VCC. But now we need to have a certain device. Most likely if we have a zero VT device, that's why I'm depicting it like this. It's an N-channel device but it's a 0VT and you can connect this to VDD and you can use low voltage devices at the bottom here. So there is like a CAS code so and here you connect VN and VN bar which are the 1.2 volt levels. So these these devices are 1.2 volt devices but they don't see the full VCC here because this these two devices will protect the bottom devices because you put gate the VDD is on the gate of these devices and this is a zero threshold voltage VTH device so at the most even if this voltage is higher than VDD you can only get VDD max on this one. So same case here, you can only get VDD depending on what the input is. So now this will be, but for pulling down these nodes, it will work effectively in the same way. So this is V out and V out bar. They will still have transition from zero to VCC or VCC to zero but at the bottom you could use low voltage devices by using this kind of CAS code but now in this like I have mentioned these two devices are should be zero VT or very low VT devices zero VT and are like native devices what we call native devices they are available in most technologies native devices this arrangement can be used when when the high voltage device is not able to turn on say this is not able to turn on properly with only 1.2 volt applied on the gate so then we can use this arrangement <laughs>